I got it. I got it at a yard sale for five dollars. <laughs> Some of these are just so funny. Like your return on investment, it's just cuckoo. Oh, back but in the it, day, like, it was so different. Yeah, but also I think sometimes like people just genuinely just don't know what they have. Yeah, or they don't care. Yeah. Uh, like yeah, they just want to get rid of it. When I had when I bought that copy of Knuckles Chaotix, like the yard sale didn't even have a 32x or a Genesis. It was just a random 32x game there. They just somehow acquired it. <laughs> yeah, and then who knows? Uh, but I literally asked the lady running it like what 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 they wanted for it, and she literally looked at it for five seconds, went, "I don't care, five dollars," and I was like, "Sold." Sold. <laughs> I, I didn't even have a 32x at the time. I just I wasn't gonna pass up on a boxed 32x game. Oh yeah, I mean for five dollars, like. Dang. Yeah, I just I, that one that one's always funny to me. Uh, now moving on, the Sega Saturn. Uh, predictably, it's still. Hey guys, I'm Bill, a one-time Instagram blogger and now a podcaster. And I'm Alex, the chaotic neutral. And together we are the Gaming and Collecting Podcast. A brother-sister duo that talks about gaming and also anime. And don't forget the collecting here sometimes. Ah, forget it. We're just a nostalgia podcast at this point. But anyways, guys, thanks for joining us as we discuss the games that shaped us. <laughs> Did you cut that out? It didn't work out. <laughs> So, <laughs> how you been? <laughs> no, you gotta cut that out. You gotta cut that out. So, Let's start the, it over. The, so, the fun fact. <laughs> the recording hadn't actually started yet. <laughs> Wait, it didn't? When... It, started, it started after you started dying. <laughs> so, this is just gonna start with you laughing uncontrollably. God damn it. Uh, for those who don't know, I was trying to make the... Uh... <laughs> beginning sound of doom with the sickness but i started laughing halfway between so yes. but you didn't hear that so none of this makes any sense yeah uh, sorry, that's just a shit show we it's, should totally it hasn't even been a minute god damn it that's just what we are at this point but anyways how you been that rough of a week (laughs) i'm i'm well for me it's a short week because i'm taking a friday off because i'm doing fun bachelorette things um for one of my dear friends so i just wanted to be friday (laughs) like i just wanted to be over at this point Uh, tomorrow's gonna be busy so yeah dance day tomorrow hmm See, I don't need to go to a bachelorette party to want it to be Friday. I just want it to be Friday all the time. Well, true, true. true yeah, true. it's true. just another week of work. And yeah, work. I mean, nothing particularly bad. I mean, I've had like a lot of really great things been going on at work, which is good. But whenever you're in that mindset of like, it's a short week and I want it to be over... Uh, that's <laughs> that's when you start being like, I want like the week feels so slow. But yeah. tomorrow will definitely go by fast in Thursday too, because I have like six meetings tomorrow, <laughs> and uh, yeah, usually goes by fast when you're full of meetings. <laughs> yeah, we're just slow. Like we haven't had a lot of uh major jobs, so I've been just doing a lot of like maintenance and stuff, which yeah, it's whatever. Hey, it's not it's not the molds. No, it's the not. moldy molds. <laughs> I've basically made Do it. Do the molds I, get moldy? Probably. I, I've made it clear that I, I'll, <laughs> I'm just not doing one of those again. So, but anyways. But anyways, guys, my name is Bill, and I am the gaming and collector. <laughs> so you've been watching a lot of anime recently. Yeah, I finished Trigun, and I finished Shaman King. I started watching Record of Ragnarok, but I thought it was boring, so I dropped it. <laughs> well, it's not that it was boring. I just thought, like, I don't, I don't know, just I couldn't, I couldn't get into it. And then I was reading reviews, and a lot of people said that, like, this the anime does not do the manga justice. 
So now I'm tempted to pick up the manga to kind of see. But there's a ton of shows that I actually want to watch, but I'm waiting mm. for them to fully come out. Like, they're coming out this season. I've also yeah. been tempted, though, to start Attack on Titan because, I don't know, I just I want to watch it. <laughs> like, well, let me know when you start so we can watch that together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can do that. Um, it's just, like, I wanted to wait for the last season, so I've been waiting for, like, a year now, and now I'm, like, I kind of just forget the whole thing because i haven't watched it in so long so now i'm like oh, i kind of really want to watch it from the beginning to the current at least yeah um well, that's why i just want to binge that one because it's like it i just i don't want to watch it then have to wait like a year just to finish it mm. yeah but, I but believe, that's my problem is i want to yeah. watch it but if i watch it now then i'm definitely gonna have to wait at some point mm. but i just really want to watch it <laughs> Yeah, no, we I get you. We need to watch Shield Hero season two. Too. Yeah, we do. We also gotta watch Chainsaw Man. Oh yeah. I'm still waiting on the dub for Kaguya-sama. God damn it. <laughs> oh, the movie. Yeah. 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 Other than that, though, the only anime I've watched recently is um that Nagatoro. Uh, Nagi- yeah. Nagi- 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 yeah, don't toy with me, Miss Nagatoro. It, it was good. It's it's entertaining. Not a show that Alex would watch, so don't expect a anime swap for it. But womp, womp, womp. otherwise, I liked it. Maybe I'll do a side thing on it or something. I don't know. Bill's gonna start a new podcast without me. <laughs> I get it. I already did. It's called the Three DO Experience. How oh, fuck dare you? <laughs> get out of my sight. Oh wait. I can't see you. You're evicted. <laughs> this is the first eviction on the podcast. Yeah, but too bad I paid rent, so you can't evict me. <laughs> My rent! Hello! Hello! Yep. But. Oh, did you hear that? Yeah, I can barely can hear her. kind of hear her. Uh, our. What, are you drinking anything? Uh, I am drinking a lovely liquid death, uh, severed lime, naturally flavored sparkling water. Wow. Murder your thirst, it says. <laughs> Pleasant. <laughs> mm. I'm drinking a pure leaf green tea, unsweetened, because I'm trying to lose weight. <laughs> And I'm doing so. Oh yeah, that's a big life update. I've cut out gluten, uh, and mostly bread. I've cut out gluten and uh, dairy from mm. my life, and it, it's a sad life because bread and cheese <laughs> are like two of my favorite foods, and it sucks not being able to eat them. But <laughs> my stomach feels so much better than it has been in like years, <laughs> so it's not constantly in pain <laughs> all the time. So, yeah. I guess it just shows that I'm lactose intolerant and have some form of a gluten allergy. Uh, also, my skin, though. Like, I haven't had, like, a breakout on my face in a while, which has been kind of cuckoo, too. So, mm. I guess it, I guess it's helping, but it's so sad because I love bread so much. Yeah. I'm trying to cut back on drinking, so. Good. <laughs> That's why I'm drinking some green tea. Well, it, I mean, like, because you don't need to drink every night, you know? Like, you don't need to <laughs> yeah, have a know. drink every single night, you know? You can just come home and just relax with some tea. You should drink some tea, Bill. No, I'm drinking water. Tea. I prefer water. Tea! <laughs> you will drink the tea! Oh, I was thinking for, um... Because I want to start gardening, and I was thinking, you know what I should grow? I should grow some, like, herbs and stuff. And I should mm. get some stuff to, like, grow herbs for tea and then i can make my own tea that sounds fun yeah but you still can't catch a tuna you have the tea (laughs) but you still can't catch a tuna go fuck yourself i i've still been trying and like every time i try like i have read so many an article so many reddit threads so many things online to teach me how to do it and i still can't figure it the fuck out how to catch fish in stardew valley on the switch i can't do it i can't figure it out and i'm just doing the waiting game of hopefully one day i'll be able to either find it in a trash can someone sends it to me in the mail or 
I can get it at the traveling cart. And you know what? It's been like six fucking years and it hasn't happened. And I'm pissed. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, though, nothing major. I haven't really been collecting a lot of. That was true aggression. I know. You I been... Yes, you have. No, no. I've, I've Mongols. Been... I've been collecting a lot Mongos. of mangas. Yeah, I've been on a manga collecting binge as of late. Uh, not a lot of games, although I did find a, a score this weekend because we went out with our mother for her birthday. Yes. And I stopped. Happy, we were at... late, happy after your birthday, mom. We love you. <laughs> yeah, this is going to come out like weeks after, but that's besides well, the Well, then point. happy late Mother's Day because it will probably come out <laughs> after Mother's Day too. Probably. But we love you. <laughs> Uh, but they were in a closed store, so I had wandered over to the retro game store there, <laughs> and I went in. I wasn't really looking for anything, you but I had big rigs. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> I don't even know if I pirate big rigs, but <laughs> it's besides the point. Big rigs. Uh, no, but I I was looking through the rack, and I happened to notice because a lot of these retro game stores just have dedicated like eBay sections now of stuff that's technically on sale on ebay but you can still buy it in the store you just there's no price given uh-huh. so i looked in and i happened to see pocky and rocky for the super nintendo just sitting there and i was like all right that's an extremely rare game that i really want i have I to must ask. have rare games yeah so i just asked casually what it was worth and they said they'd give it to me for 180 plus tax which was just under 200 that's not bad. And I was like, I, I can't pass it up. I don't really have the money, but I just can't pass this up right now. So I grabbed that. So that's another one off the list. I still have to find the sequel at some point, though. But that's and, for another day. Yeah, that's for if I ever happen upon it. The sequel is just as expensive and rare. But speaking of rare and expensive games, uh, let's get into our topic for this episode. No, no, no. We're talking about the cheapest games in Bill's collection. Number Actually, one. that would be a fucking Big fun. <laughs> I don't own Big Rigs, but um, that would be a fun topic. Probably not that interesting, but it would be fun. But let's... Uh... Next week, guys, we're going to go over <laughs> the cheapest games. This week is the most expensive. Boring! Next week will be... Why am I crazy? Why did I become psycho? I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. know. I'm so... so <laughs> as we were saying, though... <laughs> So last season, you're ignoring the fact because I know you're fake. I know you're faking it, and <laughs> so last season we had done an episode where I went over my most valuable games in my collection, kind of comparing them from the last time I cataloged it, and that was pretty fascinating. Just because there's actually some pretty, it's funny how some things will shift like drastically, and other things like don't change at all. And I can meet you, you know. Um, oh, you can mute me? Yeah, if I really need to. Wait, can I mute myself? Yes. Wait. And she muted herself. I... <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, okay. so continuing on with, the, with what I was saying. So it's actually kind of interesting to see what things have um kind of changed and what, other th- what things haven't. So I thought it'd be fun to do kind of like a, a yearly revisit of this where we look at certain games and then... We we'd kind of just look over and see what the values have gone to through for throughout the uh, the years. So <laughs> you get over there. I, I well, I was trying to pull up the list from my iPad and I hit the mic. <laughs> okay. So this is so. What's fun about this list is I actually had the previous list um, yeah. from last year still saved, so I just kind of updated it with what the new games are and i just moved the uh, last year's over to the old games kind of in a fun way of just comparing and contrasting so i guess we'll start with how we did it last time because the last time we went through this list we started with nintendo jumped over to playstation sega and just kind of went down the list yeah so we're going to start with the nintendo consoles because that's just kind of the most generic way to start basic so this is (laughs) interestingly enough the nes last time the the most valuable yeah, last time the most valuable game was Dragon Warrior 4, uh, which was a loose copy that I own. And that currently loose, it goes for $146, mm-hmm. which is a lot. Now, ironically, it is still my most valuable game on the NES. It's actually gone up a bit since the last time we did this list. 
<laughs> and what's funny is Dragon Quest three and two are also up there. Like three is over a hundred dollars. Two is like sixty five. Dragon Quest Quest one though is like worthless. <laughs> like <laughs> there's like so the many original copies. Original Dragon Quest, everyone's just like, no, fuck that. Fuck well, it was that. it was super produced, so you can get it for like twelve dollars. Oh, okay, never mind. Ironically, my second most my second most valuable game though is um, uh, Ten Gen Tetris, which is a a game that was technically um, it was technically un unreleased. Well, it was released, but then it was pulled from the shelves. Mm. So it was kind of one of those situations. Mm-hmm. But anyways, now moving on to the Super Nintendo. So the Super Nintendo was actually kind of funny to me. The last time we did this list. Harvest Moon was actually around my most valuable, and that that one kind of spiked in value at the time. Since then, Earthbound has actually retaken it as my mm. most valuable. Because in when I originally did this, Earthbound was the most valuable game I owned on the Super Nintendo. Uh, it's currently sitting at three hundred and fifty six dollars. Damn! Just for the loose cartridge. Damn. Uh, with Harvest Moon sitting around 351. So they're that close right now. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is pretty close. Yeah. Uh, ironically, the game I just bought, Pocky and Rocky, is currently sitting at 166 loose. So around what I paid for it. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, shit like that's always funny to me. Like Earthbound and Harvest Moon, I swear, are constantly switching back and forth. Mm. Now, moving on, <laughs> now we get Alex's favorite console of all time. Ugh. <laughs> yeah. Garbage. So th- the Absolute Ninten- trash console. So the Nintendo 64, previously my most valuable game, was Conker's Bad Fur Day, uh, which is just one of the most valuable games for that system in general. Mm. It has actually since been surpassed by oh. one dollar. <laughs> one dollar! Uh, by Castlevania Legacy of Darkness, which I also have loose. Um, and that's currently sitting at 134, which is a lot for a pretty mediocre game. <laughs> Are some of these values, like, kind of arbitrary? I mean, where they're so d- minuscule, like, of a difference, like, $1? Like, it, like, why do you think it's only, like, a dollar more expensive? Yeah, it's just how the... It's just kind of how it, it'll cycle at times. Um, I assume it's just the algorithm kind of going crazy. Like, this is based off of... um, This algorithm's based off of price charting, mm-hmm. which basically compiles a whole bunch of different... Uh, prices across a bunch of different sources into like one kind of average yeah so it's probably just a slightly higher average is what's making castlevania slightly more valuable right now oh, okay interesting yeah but it's literally like a dollar more expensive than cocker at the moment yeah it's just which, funny which it is kind of funny actually uh but moving on now so now we're getting into so the, this next one is pretty boring it's uh the nintendo gamecube and the most valuable game is Fire Emblem Path to Radiance, which was the also my most valuable game previously, currently yeah. sitting at around $305 on the GameCube. Dang. Yeah, this one has sh- uh, shifted a lot in price over the years. <laughs> um, because when I bought it, I paid like $200 for my copy originally. Oh, wow. And then it proceeded to drop down to like 90 for a while, which I was pissed about. I was like, God damn it. You were like, dang it. But now but, you're like, all right, all right. Well, now I'm not as upset because it's up to like 300 now. And I'm like, it's probably going to go down again, though, because GameCube's eventually going to kind of sink sink a bit. Mm. What I find interesting is the two other most po- uh, valuable games for the GameCube I own is actually the two Pokemon games, Coliseum and Gale of Darkness. Mm. Uh, Gale of Darkness sits at 200 right now. And it's funny because I got both of those games in a bargain bin at a GameStop like wow. years ago for like five bucks. That's crazy. It's funny because like the GameCube is currently just that hot console that everybody mm. wants, and like the the game prices for it are just absurd. Well, I at feel the like moment. we're at that it's that age where people are nostalgic for it. You mm-hmm. know. Now the GameCube generation is hitting the the adult phase where they're. They're not like work. They don't own houses yet, and they're kind of all just working. And they kind of have to. They have money to burn, basically. So they're all going crazy for their GameCube stuff. Yeah, and I mean, like they all have a Wii, probably, <laughs> so probably. they can uh, play all the games on there. They don't even need the GameCube itself. So. Well, what's funny is Paper Mario: The Thousand Year Door is sitting at one twenty right now, 
And I got that for like three dollars back in the day on wow. Amazon. Yeah, that's like a cult classic now. Yeah, it's the, considered probably one of the greatest Mario RPGs of all time. So now moving on to the Wii. So this one, so I call. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like to call Ooh. this. Yeah, I like to call this the uh, the fire emblem effect. I love how you just go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just waiting for me to stop. Because I don't have a reaction anymore. I'm just kind of like, okay, do your stupid. Do your I stupid. gotta start doing more stupid shit to get a reaction out of you. Then that's a challenge, Bill. You just those are challenge words. <laughs> okay then. How fucking dare you? <laughs> so for the Wii, I I like to call this the um the fire emblem effect. Yes, the emblem and, fire effect. Got it. In the previous episode, my um most valuable game was the Metroid Prime Trilogy Steelbook, yes. which is still pretty valuable. That sits at like 93 right now. Uh, but since then, Fire Emblem uh, Radiant Dawn has since shot up because Fire Emblem is just like super hot again right now. Hmm. And that's currently sitting at 150. Could that be because like a Fire Emblem game came out recently? So one did come out recently, and also uh, Advance Wars just got a uh, a re release, which is a, a Fire em- similar to Fire Emblem type game. Mm. Um, I think the the tactical RPG kind of uh, they, they're starting to like uh, basically Fire Emblem is just very popular at the moment, so it's kind of like we're going through a cycle now where all the Fire Emblems are shooting up in price. Yes, because people want them. Hmm. Particularly the older ones, like not the newer ones, not so much because they're still pretty easy to find. Mm. But moving on now to the Wii U, so and and this is where you should have made the Wii U joke, by the way. <laughs> Too late, Wii U, Wii U. Yeah. Uh. So the Wii U, Help. for the, for the <laughs> most part, it's it's its game library is pretty cheap. Like sucks. No, it doesn't Wii suck. Wii U sucks. Garbage console. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, Miss. Almost Luke. as bad as the N64, but just a little better. Some people might agree with you there, but let's be real. Um, <laughs> so the Wii U's library is pretty cheap for the most part. Like, the majority of the games, like, you're going to look at 55 at most. Sucks. What's funny is, though, the most valuable game I own for it is actually The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess HD. Which is a port of a GameCube game. <laughs> um, that game shot up in price because that was a very late Wii U game. Yeah, and it's just it's. I guess there wasn't a lot of copies made. Yeah, um, well, it was I, at the end of the life, so they probably were just like, "All right, we're not gonna buy, pay pay for any more of these to be made." Hmm. Well, because tw- uh, Wind Waker HD, the other Zelda GameCube Zelda. That's only like 65, which is more on the expensive side compared to most of the Wii U library, but that's still not not in the hundreds yet. Hmm. Like the only other semi-valuable game I have on the Wii U is Xenoblade Chronicles um, X, which is around 71. Hmm. Just kind of interesting. Now, moving on from that, next we get the Nintendo Switch. And the Switch... Not a lot changed because my most it's valuable. A very new console, and you can get most of the games out there. Yeah, um, yeah, that's why my most my most valuable is Octopath Traveler Wayfarer's Edition, which was the uh, day one special edition you could buy, which had like the uh, the big box like book thing that you that came with it. Uh, that currently is sitting at one hundred and sixty eight dollars. Huh. Uh, it was it was a limited edition thing, so it doesn't surprise me. Um. Another valuable thing I own for the system is I have the Fire Emblem 30th Anniversary Collection, which doesn't even have a physical game in it, by the way. It's just a box with some merch in it, <laughs> uh, which is kind of funny. Uh, and then the f- weirdest one to me is Bloodstained Curse of the Moon, which is $100, and that's an 8-bit game. <laughs> like, it's the funniest thing ever. Huh. I guess they needed to make their money back. Well, it was a limited run release, so I'm wondering if that's why it's so expensive. I remember... Oh. I. I bought that at a Best Buy for like $20. Why not? Years ago. And now it's ultra expensive for some reason. Hmm. Yeah, the Switch. I'm curious how the Switch is going to evolve over the next few years, though. Well, Switch 2. When are All we right. going to get it? So moving on to Game Boy. So Game Boy actually surprised me. 
Uh, for the longest time, my, my most valuable Game Boy game was Mystical Ninja starring Goemon. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that sits at around $48. Yes. I guess because Pokemon is on the ups again, my the Pokemon uh, Generation 1 games have shot up in value. So currently, my most valuable game I own is Pokemon Blue. Which is slightly more expensive than red and yellow for some reason. I thought I'd figure yellow blue would. It's awesome. I, I guess I, I don't understand why blue is more expensive. I feel like yellow would be should be because that's the better game. But well, maybe they had I don't know. Maybe they made more of the yellow cartridge. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. Maybe the we blue don't... ones are just rare. Maybe it had a special dye that was in the blue. <laughs> I doubt it. They only made limited because of that. I'm just coming up with theories. Theories. <laughs> I think it's just blue's hot right now or something. I don't know. Well, but yeah. blue's a nice color. My car's kind of blue. Yeah. I don't Some know. Say green. Maybe it's because more people bought red back in the day and there's less copies of blue or something. Yeah, that's what I'm know. thinking. Or it's the special blue pigment. My my copy's actually sun damaged, so I'm not sure if it would be <laughs> worth as much. Wah, but wah, wah. Um, Yeah, it's going for 60 right now, loose. Just the cartridge. Don't even ask what the boxes are worth. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty expensive for a Game Boy. Yeah, Game Boy, game. original Game Boy. Now, moving on to Game Boy Color. So, Game Boy Color hasn't changed much. It's still Resident Evil Gaiden is my Resident most valuable. Evil. I always forget that there's a Resident Evil game on a Game Boy. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of people do. It sounds so weird. It's, a, it's such a goofy game. I, I kind of like it because it's like a, a top-down horror action RPG-ish kind of game. Um, it's, it's completely non-canon at this point because I believe... They cha- it was meant to be a tie-in to the original tech demo for Resident Evil 4, and then they changed Resident Evil 4 to what it is now, and it kind of just made that game wah, wah. not canon anymore. Wah, wah. Uh, that sits at $191, though. Nice. Uh, what's funny is right behind it is Metal Gear Solid for the Game Boy, or Metal Gear Ghost Babble, as it's officially known. I-, I find it funny. My two most valuable Game Boy Color games are like Resident Evil and Metal Gear. <laughs> <laughs> two so two game. games that are just like, Game Boy. <laughs> yeah, uh, Metal Evil. Gear. Yeah, <laughs> Metal Gear Ghost Babble is actually pretty cool though, because it's it's basically a classic Metal Gear game just on the Game Boy Color. Mm-hmm. A lot of dialogue though for a fucking Game Boy Color game. It's like just get on with it, please. And the most valuable Pokemon game is Pokemon Crystal version at one hundred and fifteen. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, Resident Evil Gaiden, though, it's such an obscure game. That's probably why it sits there. Obscure. Now, as for the GBA, so this one is a bit skewed just because of the quality of my the version I own. So originally, my most valuable Game Boy Advance game was Pocky and Rocky with Becky, which is the third game in the Pocky and Rocky series. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have that loose, and that game loose goes for $223. Oh, wow. I got it for 70 at Bowser's Basement years ago, so it's gone up considerably since then. Yeah. Um, It's actually since, though, been overshot by Castlevania Aria of Sorrow. Hmm. Although the only reason I believe it has gone up over currently for me is I have a boxed pristine copy of it. Mm -hmm. And I think the box is what's bringing the price up because i believe loose ari of sorrow is probably lower on the on the spectrum but yeah (laughs) the funniest part about that one is i ordered that on amazon like years ago and i was just trying to get the cartridge and when i it arrived it was the full boxed thing and i was like oh shit oh dang (laughs) i was like cool i'm not gonna complain no, back then, I just anytime I got a uh, boxed Game Boy Advance game, I was like, "This is cool," because I didn't, ha- I don't have many of them. I only have a handful, so whenever I get one, it's kind of cool. But yeah, like similar though, like to other Game Boys, uh, Pokemon Emerald is the third most valuable game I own loose, and that's going for one hundred and seventy-seven now. God damn! Dang. Yeah, the Game Boy Game Boy Pokemon's are going are pretty up there now like the cheapest one is seventy dollars interesting yep now moving on to the nintendo ds so this one a a bit of a a bit of a shift so previously my the most valuable uh nintendo ds game was etrian odyssey 3 yes 
Now, I believe so. It has since been overpassed by Dragon Quest V, uh, which is currently going for two hundred and ten dollars. Etrian Odyssey Three is only going for about two hundred. So, my theory with this one is Etrian Odyssey is actually getting a re-release on Switch uh, very soon. Mm-hmm. which includes three. So three is getting a re-release and I think the demand for it has gone down slightly. Oh, okay. Uh, what's funny is my, when I first made this list up, the, my most valuable DS game was Pokemon mystery dungeon explorers of the sky. Uh, that's also around 200, $200 and sitting in third right now. But yeah, Dragon Quest V is an incredibly popular entry in the series, and the uh, Dragon Quest four, five, and six currently the most convenient way to play them is on the DS, so that's probably why their value is kind of going up right now. Hmm. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, there's a lot of very expensive DS games. The DS is slowly becoming a very yeah. expensive game, expensive system to collect for. Well, I bet, too, after they closed the stores and stuff on the... Well, no, that's the 3DS. This is just the DS. Oh, okay. We'll get to the 3DS in a second, because well, the 3DS's most valuable game will shock you, because it shocked me. Huh. But, yeah. I mean, wow, Herbs Sims in the City is going for $40 now. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyways. <laughs> just looking at that. So speaking of the 3DS, though, moving over to the Nintendo 3DS, this actually surprised me. Uh, so previously, when I did this list, uh, my complete uh, Persona Q like special edition was the most valuable. Yep. So that's currently my fourth most valuable now. Oh dang! So it's still 120. It's still 128 dollars. Yes. So, so this, all this... the other ones are more expensive, is what you're saying. So there's three there's three games that are more expensive. Yeah. One of those is uh, actually Persona Q2 Special Edition at yeah. 187. <laughs> My most valuable game on the 3DS, though, this surprised me, is <laughs> Professor Layden and the Azrian Legacy. Huh. Azrian Legacy. This oh, game wow. is going for $225. Dang, that's like, expensive for a DS game. 3ds game well yeah what um, whatever what surprises me is that it's professor layton of all things hey cult I classic mean, we love our professor layton in this I, house. I i do enjoy me some professor layton uh so the other layton game on the 3ds is going for 67 which is also kind of expensive mm. uh and then the layton that that one that came out that stars like his daughter is going for 80 but that one you can also get on the Switch, so that's not an issue. The other one that's very unfortunate, though, is Professor Layden versus Phoenix Wright, which is going for 182 Oh, dang. I, I bought that day one at a GameStop, and they had to literally go and get it out of the back room because they didn't expect anyone to pick it up, and they didn't put it on the shelves yet. Meh. Yeah. That's funny. Bill making people work. Yeah. Well, I showed up. I showed up day like literally right as the store opened, so they hadn't even considered putting it on the shelf yet. You were like, "I need it," and they yeah. were like, "Fucking loser." They were just kind of like, <laughs> uh, "We have to work." It's too um, early. So then, moving on to everyone's favorite Nintendo console, the Virtual Boy. Um, my most valuable. Mr. Spunky Bowling. I spoiled it. Yeah, it's it's the same as it's been since the last time. No change. Uh, I haven't collected any new Virtual Boy games since then. If anything, they've just all kind of gone up. Mm. And Nestor's Funky Bowling is currently going for $70. Oh, it's so, not that expensive. No. When you think about it. Yeah, I mean, but for a, a, a cheap little bowling game, I mean. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. It's just funny. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, so that ends the Nintendo consoles. A lot of change Good. over... It's actually kind of funny to me. There was a lot the of fishing change. game is too hard on Nintendo. Yeah, yeah. there there was a lot of sw- a change though with the uh, the Nintendo consoles. Yeah. Uh, pl- and PlayStation, believe it or not, has also been pretty interesting change wise. So moving over to the PlayStation uh, consoles, um, so this one is interesting to me because PlayStation One, uh, over like the past like couple months, oh, there is yeah, this one hasn't changed a while for you. Because I remember you saying yeah. this was your most expensive for a while, so that's, wow. 
So I'm surprised. I've been kind of tracking PS1 as of late just because it's my favorite console to collect for. Yes. Tiny um, Tank's on it, so yeah. you know it's a good console. That game's I out. wish Tiny Tank was on the Jaguar, because then like it would just make the Jaguar even more better than the N64. Jaguar. But, um, Jaguar. Yeah, so originally my most valuable game was Kalanoa, Door to Phantom Bio. Yeah. And that game is still th- over almost $400. It's like 346 right now. Oh my god. Um there's been a lot of shifting in the 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 PS1 space like for a while Klonoa would go between it would constantly be shifting between being the most valuable and then not being the most valuable. Uh currently though I guess there must be a Persona boom going on because Persona 2 Eternal Punishment has surpassed it for the mm-hmm. time being and it is sitting actually a pretty decent amount more expensive. It's currently $381. Wow. Um I got this uh it, amazon like 2012 for 20 dollars oh my god that boxed. is hilarious <laughs> yeah it's Box this... too? Damn. it's funny how different 2012 was compared to now tilly's yep. here she's back yeah my my ps1 library is my most valuable library and that currently sits at like 1300 dollars oh my god you gotta ensure that Sonny's right. You need to insure your collection. <laughs> yeah. Now, moving on to the PS2. So, this one I actually was unexpected to me because I never, I didn't think this game was going to get like uh, dethroned as the most valuable PS2 game for a long time. Mm-hmm. But uh, for the longest time, Dot Hack Park 4 Quarantine uh, has been like just that one PS2 game that's just really expensive for no reason. Because uh, the Dot Hack series is really funny because all it's four parts, and parts one through three are all really not that expensive. Like you can get them all for like around thirty dollars, mm-hmm. like thirty to forty. The fourth one though is like has been a two hundred dollar game for years now. Oh, okay. And it's 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 always just been up there. Uh, recently, though, Xenosaga Episode 3 has surpassed it at 247. Um, yeah, Xenosaga is a very fun RPG. I, I wonder if there's been a boom recently because Xenoblade has been doing so well. Uh, yeah. But it's funny, though, because Xenosa- Xenosaga Episodes 1 and 2 are like 40 bucks. Like, not even. You have 30 to 40. Like, But Part 3 is wicked up there, which... Kind of sucks because part three is arc. <laughs> part three is uh New England. <laughs> very yeah yeah I know. Also, one of the most valuable PS2 games is still Dragon Ball Z Budokai three, which is also like two hundred dollars. Oh wow, dang! Yeah, it's insane to me, just how these things like shift around. Uh, so the most boring one on this list is the PS3. Uh, last oh. time we last time we did the list, it was the Atelier Arlen. No, no, no. Atelier uh, Arlen Trilogy, which is sitting at $95, and it's still my most valuable. Ironically, following it, the most valuable games after that are the two Spider-Man games made <laughs> for the for that generation. Yeah, and then Spyro, Dawn of the Dragon, and those are all, like, around the 60s. Spyro. Um, yeah, not, 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 not a lot of change there, though. Uh, now, as for the PS4, this one was a surprising shift. So before okay. before my most valuable game was Persona 5 Take Your Heart Premium Edition. Mm. Um, that's now only like $90. Oh. Like, yeah, the Persona 5, I'm guessing it's because Persona 5 is on fucking everything now. But yep. <laughs> um, yeah, because even Persona 5 Royal Phantom Thieves uh, Special Edition is more valuable but, than it. My most valuable PS4 game is The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 2 Relentless Edition edition. I've never heard of that game. It's it's an RPG it's a Falcom RPG. It's kind of like Imagine Persona meets Final Fantasy. Oh, okay. Nice. You'd actually probably like it. It's it's a very it's very anime. Anime? Yeah, they're very anime. anime? You'd, prob- <laughs> you'd honestly probably like them. That was probably very high pitched. I'm so sorry. Yeah, a little. Uh, yeah, but that game currently. Rude! You're not supposed to agree. You're supposed to say no. It was fine. 
<laughs> yeah, that game currently sits at um one hundred and forty-seven dollars, though. Eat your beans. There's a beans emoji in the server now. Eat your fucking beans. Beans. No. <laughs> yeah. Is there a game about beans on this list? I doubt it. There should be. <laughs> All right. So th this one was just funny to me now. So next we have the PlayStation 5, and PlayStation 5 is so new that, like, it was very hard to figure <laughs> out what the most valuable game at the time was. Yeah. And my last time we did this, it just happened to be Elden Ring, because that was the newest game that I owned for it at the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for whatever reason now, Elden Ring's like only like $33 now. Because there's probably so many out yeah, there. Yeah, most likely. This one just made me laugh for no reason, but the most valuable game on my PS5 apparently is Dirt 5. Dirt 5? What is Dirt 5? It's an off-road racing game. Oh! It's, curr it's currently going for $62, which is less than its uh, new price, so that's something. But it's the most expensive game I own for the PS5, I guess. Interesting. I don't know why. When I saw that, I was like, Dirt 5, what? what? Why this game of all? <laughs> yep. Uh, now, moving on to the PlayStation Portable. Uh, previously, my most valuable game for that was The Legend of Heroes 3 Songs of the Ocean. That game is still very expensive. It's like $141 currently. Uh, it has nice. since been over overpassed by uh, Yeast, the Oath of Flag. Yeast? Yes. Or Yeast. It's either Yeast or Yeast. I have really no idea how that. I feel like it's not Yeast. <laughs> no, no, not, not Yeast. Yeast. <laughs> That's what I was saying. I was going Yeast? Yeast? No. Um, yes. Yeah, but now it's currently the th Yeast, the Oath of Flagana. Yeast? Uh, premium edition, which is apparently valuable. <laughs> All right, then you have it. So yep. you are valuable. Wow. Yes. Uh, also, Persona Two Maybe. on the PSP is up there now too. That's one hundred and fifty-two dollars. Hmm. So the, I think Persona is going through a binge, uh, like a bur uh, kind of like a burst period right now. Yeah. Rightfully so. It's a great series. Yes, it is. Now for the Vita. The Vita is fascinating to me because Vita games are just kind of expensive right now, but none of them are like mega expensive. Yeah. None of them are atrociously expensive. I mean, they're atrociously expensive for what they are, but for the most part, it's nothing like ungodly expensive. Yeah. So previously, the Persona 4 Dancing All Night Special Edition was my most valuable game. That's around going for around 76 right now. Uh, currently, my most valuable game is Hyperdimension Neptunia Rebirth 3 uh, V Century. I feel like half of these games, they're just trying to fit as many words into one title as possible. <laughs> it's like all these Japanese animes that are absurdly long with like these really ridiculous titles. Hey, what are you doing? What? Sorry, Tilly's up to no good. Oh, okay. <laughs> She, oh, yes. Go in your bee bed. She's in her bee. She's going in. She's going in. She's in. She's okay. in the bee bed. Yeah, so Hyper Dimension Neptunia, though, that's that's going for like $86. Wow. Good game. Worth playing. That, that That's a fun, quirky series. Good game. Good game. Did you just play okay. like football? Good sure. Game. So the Se <laughs> we're into the Sega consoles now, and this Sonic! was... <laughs> Iron well, I, uh, yeah, well, we'll get to it. So, is ironically, there a Sonic game on here? uh, kind, kind of, um, <laughs> so Sonic. I, ironically, the Sega Master System at the time, my most valuable game was uh, Fantasy Star. It is now uh, another Yeast game, uh, Yeast the Vanish. Yeast, <laughs> no, I'm gonna say Yeast now just to get you to shut up, but um, no. Uh, it it's yes the first yes game of uh, the vanished omens. No one buys your fake crocodile tears. <laughs> they're not crocodiles, they're hamster tears. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, I got ya. I got ya. <laughs> yeah, that game's currently going for sixty nine dollars now, which is one dollar more than Fantasy Star. Sorry. Nice. I'm um, immature. I need what. So, this is where shit gets really boring. Uh, so now the rest of my Sega consoles are all the same. All the <laughs> like, same. <laughs> like, but the prices have fluctuated a bit. Okay. So 
most valuable Sega Genesis game is still Fantasy Star 4. Nice. Uh, understandably, I have that complete in box, which probably has a bit to do with why it's so high up there. Um, also, the game Sparkster is now $115. I don't know when that happened. But okay. hey, <laughs> if you have a, co- a loose copy, it's worth something. Uh, moving over to the Sega uh, CD, it is also still Pop Full Mail. Uh, that ca- oh god, okay. So <laughs> we've told the story about how I got Pop Full Mail years ago. Like we, me and Alex, were going on a retro game hunt, <laughs> and I blew all my money at the first store because nah. I happened to pop find Pop Full Mail only they un- and they only wanted two hundred dollars for it, uh, which was a steal at the time because this game currently sits at six hundred and thirty three dollars oh okay that is a steal yes uh yeah pop film mail is a very awesome side-scrolling action rpg but my god is it expensive and like not worth playing uh other than that like lunar 2 is probably the second most valuable and that sits at like just under 400 yeah (laughs) what a console to collect for what a console what is that? Um, now moving what? on, moving on, we got um, the Sega 32X, everyone's favorite Sega console. Knuckles. Yeah, Big Knuckles. Sonic, the Knuck- Sonic game. Kinda. Um, it's, Knuck- it's the Sonic franchise. Yeah. It's Sonic. <laughs> you play as characters bungee corded together. It's it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, Knuckles Kadox is still my most valuable game, but that is. That is specifically because I have a um, boxed bo- copy. A boxed copy. Ah. Uh, it currently goes for two hundred and seventy three. No. I got it. I got it at a yard sale for five dollars. <laughs> Some of these are just so funny. Like your return on investment, it's just cuckoo. Oh, back but in the it, day, like, it was so different. Yeah, but also I think sometimes like people just genuinely just don't know what they have, yeah, or they don't care. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah, they just want to get rid of it. When I had when I bought that copy of Knuckles Chaotix, like the yard sale didn't even have a 32x or a Genesis. It was just a random 32x game there. They just somehow acquired it. <laughs> yeah, and then who knows? Uh, but I literally asked the lady running it like what 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 they wanted for it, and she literally looked at it for five seconds, went, "I don't care, five dollars." And I was like, "Sold." Sold. <laughs> I, I didn't even have a 32x at the time. I just I wasn't gonna pass up on a boxed 32x game. Oh yeah, I mean for five dollars, like. Damn. Yeah, I just I, that one. That one's always funny to me. Uh, now, moving on the Sega Saturn. Uh, predictably, it's still Panzer Dragoon Saga. And Panzer Dragoon Saga is the most valuable game I own, period. Uh, currently going for one thousand one hundred and fifty dollars. What? C- can you repeat that? One thousand one hundred and fifty dollars. Jesus, you didn't pay that much for it, right? No. Okay, thank God. I think we paid five hundred. Oh my God! Yeah, I mean, still though, that's that's insane. Oh yeah, the the game is the holy grail of the Sega Saturn library. That you need to insure that game at least, <laughs> like insure it, please. Yeah, <laughs> that's a lot of money. Oh my God! It is a very valuable game. Jesus, you said like, what did you say your total collection was? Uh, I'd rather not give the total collection value. <laughs> oh okay, yeah, no, um, true. Uh, does does that take up a good percent of it though? Um, not really, because that's that's only a thousand dollars, and when you actually calculate all these games, I don't. Together, never mind. I don't want to. Yeah, you. I, I don't want to know how much you've spent on this. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. let's. Most of these I've were like a fraction of the price when I bought them. So. Oh my god. Uh, moving on, Sega Dreamcast. It's still ill bleed. Uh, Ill shout bleed. out, shout out to Illbleed. Ill uh, bleed. currently going for two hundred and sixty-four dollars. My copy was pieced together from two incomplete copies. <laughs> I think I paid about a hundred dollars total on both copies. So, oh, no. and then I later resold the uh, the spare b- 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 loose disc and got like two hundred dollars for it. So I've kind of flipped it. So it kind of oh. worked out in the end. Hey. I actually I had a net gain <laughs> in with net Illbleed because I think I paid seventy for one copy and then like twenty for my other incomplete copy to get a complete copy and then I sold the the extra disc I had and I got two hundred for it so I made I made over a hundred dollars on on investment there so oh damn well lucky you 
I just got kind of lucky that I happened to Apparently. hold on. <laughs> oh no, I just I I could have sold that extra copy of Illbleed like at years before I did, and I just finally I actually sold it to John, believe it or not. But um, John gave me like two hundred dollars for it. Uh, John the John the owner of uh, Bowser's Basement. That is John. John the Bill. Oh wait, that's Bob. No. Never mind. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I I made I I made pretty good on that because I I was holding on to that for a while and I just kind of forgot about it and then I one day was like I should probably sell this. Yeah. But yes. Uh, and Make then some money. after the Dreamcast, the last Sega thing is the Game Gear. Uh, most valuable Game Gear game I own is Tales Adventure. Yep. Uh, currently, Tales Adventure goes for eighty five. I think I paid like forty at a convention. Huh. All right. So. Double yeah. your money. Double your money. No, I just bought these things so early on before collecting became the fucking disaster it is now. Oh, God. Um. Yeah, so now moving on to the Xbox consoles. I only own two Xbox consoles, so we're only going to talk about those. But, uh, what? The, uh, so the original Xbox. Uh, Dino Crisis 3. Yeah, so it was it Dino Crisis. Yeah, it was Dino Crisis 3 back in the day, and it still is. Uh, so the, the original Xbox library is like famously like worthless, like no, like all these games are stupidly cheap. Uh, that one goes for $60. So (laughs) if you really want to pay $60 for that pile of fucking garbage, go for it. Why not? Why not? Yeah. Why not? Um, now moving... This is a Lizzie McGuire song. You were crazy, James. <laughs> cool. Um, moving on to the Xbox. Still not amused. I just don't care about Lizzie McGuire. How um, dare you? Wait. Pause. No. How dare you say that Lizzie McGuire was the best show on? Was it Disney Channel? Yes. You don't I even remember Disney what Channel, Channel it was well, on. I wasn't sure if it was Nickelodeon. Just, no. Was the best live action Disney Channel show. Because Hilary Duff was the best, and she had the best worst songs ever. And she sang with herself in a movie. It was great. Don't you dare dis Lizzie McGuire. Whatever. Anyways. No! (laughs) Take it back! (laughs) Apologize to Lizzie McGuire. Whatever. (laughs) <laughs> no, we're not moving on until you apologize to Lizzie McGuire. I'll just right mute now. you. <laughs> Apo- <laughs> Don't you dare. I'll mute you. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> I can. I'll go upstairs. <laughs> I'll shut your laptop. <laughs> <laughs> just just apologize to Lizzie McGuire. Right I apologize now. to the cart the physical the cartoon that didn't actually exist. All right, good enough. Good enough. I'll take it. <laughs> All right. So the Xbox 360, uh another console that is inf- infamous for kind of having pretty worthless games. Uh not not the games being <laughs> bad, just uh they are worth nothing. I just sound like Mickey Mouse. All right. What? I laughed and I was like, "Oh!" Like I sounded like Mickey Mouse. Cool. Um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so previously my most valuable game was Aki Katana, which is like a bullet hell shoot 'em up. All right. Uh for whatever reason, because of a dollar, it is now the second most valuable behind Bullet Witch. <laughs> huh. All which right. is like which is like a poor man's uh bayonetta. <laughs> it, it is the most Oh. It, it's the most mid game I think I've ever played. It is so just there. It's something though, and it, it goes is. for thirty six dollars if you want to experience it. Yeah. Why All right. not? Why now that we've gotten the known consoles over with, now we're gonna get into the funny ones because you, you got a few some of those. The yes. Some of the best consoles. So Atari's twenty six hundred. I have not bought an Atari twenty six hundred game since the last time we did this, so uh, nothing's Klax. changed. It's still Clax because Clax is. I have a sealed copy of Clax. Uh, boxed and everything that I don't plan on ever opening just because realistically it's clacks on the 2600 I mean yeah who wants to play that um, you do. 
I I mean, I I can if I'm gonna play Clax, I'll just play it on one of like the twelve other copies I own. All right, true, true. Yeah, and it's it's a twenty six hundred game. I mean, it's I literally I only own it's that just start. What? It's the start. No, of the Clax Empire. <laughs> it was actually the last game ever released for the uh, 2600 too, which is kind of cool. Huh. Official, official game. Oh, you don't released. have a 5200? No. Oh. A 5200 is massive, and I don't have space for you it. You put your order. beer in it. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> um, so now moving on to the Atari Lynx. Um, Atari Lynx, most valuable game was... Gauntlet. Is that a handheld? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, it was Gauntlet, the third encounter. Yep. Uh, it's still that game. Uh, twenty seven dollars. I don't own a lot of Lynx games currently, so yeah. take what you will. I mean, it's not the Jaguar, so I get it. Yeah. Speaking of the Jaguar, so. Hell yeah. Uh, most valuable Jaguar game I owned then was Rayman. Mm -hmm. Uh, one hundred and forty nine dollars. It's still Rayman. Uh yeah, Jaguar games are kind of value are very pretty are valuable, but not uh crazy valuable like some consoles. Um, the the rarest um, games I own are they for more it, valuable than the N sixty four? Depends on the game. Um, that's not an acceptable answer. I'd have to answer. look, and I really don't know. There's some N sixty four games that are more valuable. There's some that aren't. <laughs> um, but yeah, Rayman's most valuable. My second most valuable is Attack of the Mutant Penguins, which is yeah amazing that game is awesome it's so don't know what's going on but it's awesome i love the game over screen because it's it jump scared you <laughs> it did yeah rayman's still a tactical marvel on that system though i love it oh yeah hell yeah hell yeah hell yeah i'm reading the next one. <laughs> oh yeah so my favorite stupid console of all time is the 3do and when we last did this list I, I was kind of confused on what the most valuable was because uh, apparently it was a, a toss up at the time between. See, yeah, the 3DO library has fucking shifted since then, like drastically, because pr previously I had said it was a toss up between Seal of the Pharaoh, which I don't even have complete and Gex. Mm -hmm. Neither of those are even close to the top <laughs> now. Oh, wow. Yeah, because Way of the Warrior, which I had then has gone up and Doom has <laughs> also gone up with a bunch of these at uh, killing times up there. Like killing times almost just as valuable, but the most valuable 3DO game I own, which is hilarious because I don't even have it complete in box. I just have a jewel case for it is plumbers. Don't wear ties. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That game I can't is wait to play that game. Yep. I'm oh, so excited. One of the, one of these days we're going to do a 3DO experience on it. And I cannot wait. It'll I'm be so excited. It'll be something I tested it and it works too. So, Hell yeah. We gotta play through, like, all the routes. We gotta go through every single route. You know what's <laughs> funny? Somebody uploaded the entire thing to YouTube so you can play it on YouTube. That's hilarious. But no, I want... Ah! I almost dropped my iPad. I want to experience it. Yeah. It's 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 a fascinating specimen. Uh, now, moving on, the, these last three aren't that interesting because literally I haven't collected games for these consoles in forever just because they're... Womp, womp kind of expensive and yeah uh but the turbo graphics 16 so the turbo graphics 16 has actually seen a bit of a renaissance recently like a lot of people are getting into it again you burp not really a burp more of just kind of a a gurp i guess a gurple uh a gurple. my most my most valuable turbo graphics 16 game is neptunia or new no no not neptunia newtopia um which is essentially a top down zelda like game uh, it's still that now, one hundred and twenty five dollars. I got that at a convention for like forty dollars, like years ago. Oh dang! Yeah, it's just shot up since then. I don't own a lot of Turbo Graphics sixteen games, so the the list is pretty skewed there. Um, after that is the Neo Geo Pocket Color. That's a system I'd actually really like to collect more for. I just don't have time or a desire to really collect those games. Um, so it's currently my most valuable game is a game called, uh, Faseli or Fedless, something weird. It's an RPG. Okay. Faseli, I think it's called. Uh, that one is fairly, it's around like the 60 to $50 range. So 
nothing too spectacular there. Uh, and then finally, we get the Wonder Swan. Um, I'm just combining the Wonder Swan and Wonder Swan, Wonder Swan color. So I don't own many games for this all either. I but yeah. So there was three Inuyasha games. I bet the One Piece games are more expensive. They might be. Don't buy. They better be. I'd have to hunt those down. I have a Hunter Hunter game for like thirty dollars too. But yeah, the most valuable um games for the Wonder Swan I own are I have the three Inuyasha games, and one of them just happens to be forty dollars. So it's that one. Yeah. <laughs> um. And yeah, that's that's. Oh, I guess we can do PC real quick if we want. Um. <laughs> wow, this is lame. Um. Yeah. The I have PC. Yeah, PC games. Uh, I have the Fallout Anthology Collection, which is that nuke-looking thing that you could buy at GameStop years ago. That oh, I guess. Oh, that's what that is in your room. Yeah, it's a it's a compilation of um. All the Fallout games. Huh. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't own a lot of physical PC games, so I, I guess that's it. Uh, it's $115 nowadays, I guess. Yay. <laughs> All right. But yeah, it, it actually, it made me laugh just how many didn't change at all. <laughs> no, I mean, I guess, if anything, well, the thing is, is some of them did change, it's just like it but it just it grew the price changed but well yeah the price changed the most expensive so yeah i mean some of them are kind of insane like pan's dragoon saga that game is just it, absurd these days yeah um what's funny is earlier this year there was a bit of a drop in price for saturn games and it actually went below a thousand for like <coughs> excuse me <coughs> excuse me <coughs> uh don't inhale your water kids um Oh, I thought that's how you were supposed to. No. Um, yeah, it ended up actually going below a thousand. Water wrong my whole life. How have you not died? Um, uh, I'm already dead. I'm a ghost. Fair. Um, this isn't a house. This is all your imagination. You're really in an insane asylum. That makes dog, so dog. much makes so much sense. <laughs> but yeah, that they actually went below a thousand though for a little while, and I thought that was I was I thought for a second we had a false dawn of like oh my god collecting's finally becoming reasonable again. <laughs> Uh, but nope, it's all nah. well. It, it it's fluctuating like some Famous things. Last are... words. <laughs> I'm already. <gasps> oh my god! What? Sorry, I got distracted. Bill, there's a Koenma figure coming out. You can pre-order it, and I want it so badly. <laughs> I find it funny how you just became the Yu Yu Hakusho fan. I I want an Urimiji. <laughs> well, <laughs> I want a cool bar figure, but. As you all know, I go, Ermi! I want one. Yeah. Like, oh my god, it's Koenma! Sorry. I got real yeah. happy. So, I guess to wrap it up, though, it, it, it's kind of funny just how these things are have sh- shifted over the years. I'm kind of curious next time we do this, what it's going to look like. Maybe the, the price market will finally tank. <laughs> Uh, we, we should do the least <laughs> we should do the least valuable games list at I would some point love too. to do that I, I think that would be hilarious because it's all going to be your garbage games actually I doubt we could even do a full episode of that let me just rapid fire them real quick because I'm sure no, they're no no you want to make it up just in case just in case all right, all right, well... if not we can rapid fire it before the next episode but just in case there's actually it would be funny just, just wait just okay wait. Patient. all right well anyways guys once again thank you for joining us on the gaming and collecting podcast the gaming and collecting podcast can be found on all your major podcasting platforms oh particularly God. apple podcast and spotify Bill, um what there's a shippo and kilala kilala figure i know i've seen it it's um so cute. i'm sorry any, look at that figure i'm sorry yeah, i'm aware <laughs> um we're made on Spotify for podcasters, Anchor, RIP. Um, and you can follow us on all the social media. All our links can be found. All our links can be found at uh, Linktree slash The Barbecue Games, like Twitter, Instagram, Good Pods. And potatoes. Um, I can sure. eat those on my diet. Sure. Um, and yeah, you can also join our Discord server and you can see Alex in all her glory. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm trying to get back into it. I'm I'm just going through a 
social media overwhelmed phase by it. So I'll be back, but I'm just taking a, taking a little step back for a bit. Yeah, but I'm overwhelmed. she likes to post cursed shit and like anime gifts and anime figures over there. So I'm hoarding on the images. So when I come back, don't worry, there'll be a plenty. All right. But anyways, guys, once again, thanks for joining us and we will see you all next time. I fucking hate.